Meet the Ballstads of Seattle. They see themselves as above average when it comes to healthy eating. You want a slice? They're in for a surprise. Because the Ballstads are among the millions of Americans that nutritionists say are engaging in a potentially harmful habit. They call it mindless eating. And even in this diet obsessed culture, it's happening to nearly everyone all the time. It seems like people do a much better job of being thoughtful and having more balance with their meals. It's that snacking in between that tends to be the culprit, that mindless eating that happens. Which is why we brought in longtime nutritionist Jennifer Adler for an eye popping look at what's in the Ballstad's diet. I'm looking to see where does sugar, where is it in the list of ingredients? Sure. So if it's in the top five, yeah. that's generally a bad sign. Okay. So we put them through the paces, scouring their pantry, fridge, and watching them over the course of 48 hours of eating. I'm in bananas. From the afternoon M&Ms to the chocolate scone and the steaming latte to the box of crackers next to the bed, snacks stitch the day together from morning till night. It's good. Since when is pasta a sweet? Jennifer found added sugar in their pasta and many so-called healthy choices. The sugar content of two of these Girl Scout cookies is the same as the sugar content of these uh, glazed pecans. This is a stir fry sauce. First ingredient is sugar on here. Okay. Sugar, sugar, sugar. Forget your sweet tooth. There's added sugar in many bagels and soups, ketchup, all kinds of foods you wouldn't associate with added sweetener. Enough added sugar for the average American to consume a whopping seven times more than nutritionists recommend every day. The recommendation is that we have uh, eight grams of sugar or less per day. Okay, really? Yeah. Oh man, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see how in all these packaged yeah. goods yeah. that really don't need sugar, that can start to add up. Let's face it, we are a nation of snackaholics with an unhealthy, almost zombie-like addiction to the nearest cookie or chip, whether we're hungry or not, and it's only feeding dangerously high obesity rates. It's getting juicy. Yeah. Sure enough, we watched the Ballstads eat some healthy meals, but here's one big problem, the same one most of us have, the filler, those mindless munchies between meals. Our work had just the big box of Oreos, so I could grab like a whole little tube and then, you know, I'd just sit there and, you know, kind of pop in a couple and then, you know, before I know it, you know, half is gone. And I'll remember eating the first one and then I'll look down and I'm like, what happened to the other ones? And there's empty wrappers. But hidden calories are called hidden for a reason. The problem runs more than cookie deep. So we went shopping for solutions with Jennifer and Lisa at the grocery store. Sure enough, every aisle, almost every item. Jennifer found options without added sugar. I like this. It's just pineapple. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good yeah. sign. Yeah. Let's find some applesauce. You know, like this one. It says no sugar added. So right. let's look on the back. Love this. Apples and water. From beans to bread, if you look close enough, there are versions with and without sugar added. We can't always make the assumption that organic is going to be less sugar. Right, okay. When it comes to cereal, she recommends buying plain like Cheerios or shredded wheat. Is it hard shopping with her? A little bit. <laughs> sugar is fine when it's part of the natural ingredients. It's all that added sugar nutritionists say that makes up bad calories. But what does all that added sugar really mean? We can think of our waistline as our lifeline. So the bigger our abdominal fat, the more likely we have underlying metabolic disease like insulin resistance and diabetes. So is this an eye opener? It is, certainly, yeah. I mean, I always thought we were pretty healthy and aware of what we were eating, but I guess I wasn't paying attention so much to the amount of sugar that we should have. And when it comes to snacking, Jennifer has another solution, something she calls preventative eating. In between lunch and dinner, I think it's, for most people, it's a really good idea to schedule in a thoughtful snack. You know, so whether that's 3, it's 3.30, really, to it's schedule 4 o'clock. Not yeah. just run into it. No, I mean, I have people set it on their phone or on their computer where they remember to have a snack so that you can have something that's very thoughtful. It's nutrient dense, it has protein in it, you know, so that you're not going to the candy bowl a half an hour later. The plain tortilla chips I'm eating while writing this story, for example, even with some hummus dip, fine. A good way to avoid the free cake down the hall later. Do you think you could stick with this? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think a lot of these things are in the realm of what we already like. And so it's just finding that little bit different of a, you know, ingredient. 
Even at the jam-packed pace of raising a family, hidden calories are easy to find and avoid if you know where to look. I'm Neil Karlinski for Nightline in Seattle.